Today, the Aurora City Council is expected to vote on an intergovernmental agreement to coordinate homeless services. Homelessness has been a hot topic in Aurora since the passage of the city's urban camping ban. New and only on 9 News this morning, John Glasgow sat down one on one with the mayor of Aurora to hear his insight on the ban and the pathway to enforcement. At the root of the urban camping ban, is this to help these people or is this to clean up the city? Both. It's absolutely both. I mean, it. Uh, it, it, it really is a blight on the city. And I'm concerned about the level of crime uh, that comes from some of these encampments in terms of property crime, in terms of vandalism. Why, why vote it in quickly if the overnight shelter space wasn't readily available? Well, it will be readily available now. I mean, this is, it's not, oh, I think, you know, you, it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing. So you have to pass, you have to see whether or not the camping ban can pass first before you can uh, spend the money in terms of developing the shelter option. Now, the city did say that it would loosely enforce the urban camping ban until there was overnight shelter space available. Since April 30th, there have been 15 encampments that have been abated, nearly one a day. The city's breaking its own ordinance, per se, by doing the abatements. What's your response to that? Well, we do have some spaces that are reserved. So we do have some capacity. So the way the law is written, and it says, um, uh, we don't have to have a shelter option space for everybody we anticipate that might need it. There's en encampments all over the city. It's only that encampment in that day for those people uh, that's offered, those people that accept it. Your vote was the deciding vote to pass the urban camp ban. came down to 5-4. Uh, if this does not clean up Aurora, fails, does this fall on your shoulders? Well, I'm sure, I'm ultimately responsible for whatever happens, uh, but it will make a difference. The question is, I mean, does it, is it a 100% solution or is it a 50% solution or is it 75? That I don't know. Um, I'm optimistic that, I mean, you know, I have to be because the, the status quo is so unacceptable. City Council first looked at renovating Aurora's only day shelter into an overnight facility, Corey. That would have cost about $5 million in the first year alone. The latest proposal on the table right now is adding shelter pallets to two safe outdoor spaces run by the Salvation Army. Now, if approved, they could be ready in about three weeks from now. Since the urban ban took effect, around 30 people have been moved and zero have chosen to move into a shelter provided by the city. Very interesting. So that's kind of the short term plan there. But what is the mayor looking at long term? Well, Mayor Coffin says that he's in talks with Governor Polis about turning the former Ridgeview Youth Services Center in Watkins into a long term shelter for about 150 people. Now, if approved, the timeline for that would be about three years away. In the meantime, the sweeps will continue in Aurora with about 10 beds available for those people to go. It's really great that you sat down with them. We've talked so much about this. There's been a lot of unanswered questions. It's almost like they didn't know what to start first to get the ball rolling. Yeah, everybody was behind this on council, at least well, more than half of them mm -hmm. were, and they wanted to bring this in, start this urban camping ban, but they really didn't have any solutions as to where these people are going. With that, under the ordinance, they have to have some overnight shelter for them. And right now, there's just a day shelter. So if these people choose to go to that day shelter, They've got to be out by the end of the day. Oh, all right. John, very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, John. Right now, in